What's up, High and Logical? Gabriel's Baker is back again. We are back at it. I'm excited to do this. Normally, how I like to do my videos is I usually like to structure them. I usually like to build drafts just so I can build it nice so that it all correlates together, like so that it doesn't really go off topic. So I'm not scrambling over a bunch of different definitions. But to be honest, I said, fuck that. I literally said that and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. This sounds really fun. This sounds like something that is really just vibing with me today so i was going to do this so what we're talking about today is individuality and now if you kind of look at that you're kind of thinking wow that sounds really open-ended and i'm going to tell you right now it is <laughs> so i don't really have something that's going to be straightforward that this is just how it needs to be no this is supposed to be open-ended i want to be able to absorb and think a lot differently about how other people might think about this so if you have anything to pretty much say please comment i really would enjoy to th uh, see and hear about what other people really want to say so individuality what makes a human a human what really makes us different from the other human being our neighbor our friend our spouse our parents our children you know there's so much that can really define us about what is different some people do not believe that we are different or that we aren't special that we aren't having the capabilities to be able to experience things that are outside of our comfort zone outside of our mental thinking outside of the box the bigger perspective right so some people don't really like to think that we are actually different that we're all pretty much the same and i know that might be very minimal for the people that might actually think that but i mean who knows there might be a pretty big collective out there that really thinks that we are definitely aren't special but i'm going to tell you right now that i do not agree with you just saying it's not that I don't agree with how you think about why we aren't special because as humans, we do definitely do have a lot of the same things that we all go through, right? We have a lot of similarities. As I always say, we go through the same concept just through different contexts. So if we are experiencing grief, there is grief right here, right? But that we are all experiencing grief in different manners, be either however you experience that grief or sadness or anger or happiness. There are ways that we have for thinking patterns that not everybody uses the same thinking patterns. Not everybody's going to dig themselves out of the same hole if they are feeling really low. And not everybody is going to go the same way to experience the highs the same way. No, it doesn't work like that. Because what makes us us is our obstacles, the things that we go through, the things that really define us to be able to make us, me, Gabriel Baker, me, you know, the things that I've had to go through, that is what makes me, the things that I have learned, the things that I've had to make sure to utilize for myself, the things that I do not want to keep around in my life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, we definitely are the same, but we are also different and that's the thing. So, you know, scientifically, we only use 10% of our brain, right? That is pretty much the scientific flat end of it to where that is probably what pretty much keeps us the same because we all experience emotion. We all experience the same things that each individual experiences because we have evolved from going to survive survival to basic building, basic thinking, I think. And then, you know, consciousness, we're able to experience, we're able to see things differently than how other people are going to see that because not everything is just based on environment. Not everything is just based on you know, experiencing like we are animals, which we are animals. You can't say that we aren't. We are. We're pretty much just like hairless monkeys, so to speak. <laughs> so that we are still primitive in a way. But that's what makes us us is our obstacles. That's what makes us different than the other person because we are going to experience the same concept. But how we go about it, how we are going to continue on that same path and how we experience it, how we are managing it how we are not managing it if it might be taking us over if we are actually conquering it then that is what makes us different you know so thoughts thinking patterns you know like for some people are actually really good at being able to stay positive in their mental not everybody is like that i can't say that i'm the best at being able to stay positive you know but i do my best i do what i can at least do for myself in that very moment when i am experiencing anger or sadness or anything like that just to be able to try to tell myself hey it's gonna be okay you're not gonna be experiencing this the entire time it might take a little while it might take a couple of days it might take a week for you to be able to get over something or being able to figure out how you're gonna go about it how you're gonna plan it how you're gonna make sure that you have a cause of action so you know, the thinking patterns of how we go about things is definitely what makes us different than most other people because not everybody's being able to do like that. 
and you know the personal endeavors for what we want to experience for ourselves the personal things that we want to strive for you know are different from person to person to person not everybody wants to succeed not everybody wants to you know just chill and just live just live the nine to five or just you know have a house and be comfortable everybody has different things that they want to strive for be it either if you do want to strive for you know rich riches fame or if anything just notoriety or if it really just comes to the point to where all you really want to do is be comfortable you have a family you have a house and you just make sure that you provide for them you know and you can combine both there's nothing in life that says that you can't do both there's nothing in life that says that you can't just do one or you can't do the other if you can't do neither there's nothing that really tells you that you can't do that and that's the thing you know our wants and needs are entirely different what we know that we actually need for ourselves differs from person to person just like it is for the personal endeavors if i know that i need to get a video out because i need to sleep i need to feel good i need to you know vent i need to be able to express myself like that is a different need than other people are really going to experience it for not everybody is going to do all those things just by doing a video just by doing the things that they are thinking that is actually going to give them those things that they want to do you know and especially when it comes to the wants you know everybody wants something everybody wants the same things everybody wants something that is going to give us either definition it's going to give us a dopamine rush it's going to give us that just good feeling or it's going to make us feel really shitty you know so like that is what definitely differs from person to person or the wants and needs the personal endeavors what people actually want for themselves you know and the, you know, finances and money pretty much are still going along with that too but you know everybody experiences financial struggles differently some people are really good at being able to save money and spend it wisely other people are not and it doesn't really help that we are obviously built around capitalism buying and selling things and making sure that we have products for every little thing that we need because we are just experiencing certain simulations that we just want to experience instead of just having to go experience those real ones we just get tinier ones like that's kind of how i like to look at capitalism but i don't think that capitalism is bad there obviously are some bad things but there's some good things around it too it's just being able to how you can individually look at it how i individually look at finances and money is going to be different from how other people do it some people think that money is completely fucking pointless and i could agree with you on that but I'm also a person that me, I want to be able to see and strive and see everything build up around me just because I'm building up too. If I build up, I want to make sure everything else around me is building up too. That is another personal endeavor that might be different for other people. But if I want to be able to see structure, if I want to be able to see advancement, I'm going to make sure that me is going to advance with it and everything else is around me is going to advance with it too. So however you really look at your finances or money is completely different. And yeah, like it's like I said, we like we are constantly just driven on money sometimes. And that's the thing that really kind of sucks. I can't say that it is definitely the greatest thing that really happens to us for us to have to really strive for money. I'm sure that there is probably many other ways that we could definitely go about doing the things that we are doing exactly right now with or without money. But until we figure it out, until we actually have a straight way of being able to do that, that is pretty much open-ended. So another thing that really kind of goes with the individuality is pretty much like what we experience in our youth. Everybody has different experiences for what they go through through their youth, be it either if they're actually having a really good, uh, comfortable, supportive empathetic family compassionate you know like there's it just depends on what we are experiencing through our youth that is really going to help us when we are getting older through our teenager years through our adult years it definitely shows a lot about what our environment really does for us at, an, at such a young age that we don't even really know what to know is right or wrong so we have to pretty much figure it out for ourselves if our parents are yelling at us we probably assume that it's going to be wrong but it doesn't always mean that it's actually wrong but because it is based on specific social standards it's based on specific boundaries with people that being able to have to understand those things is something that everybody learns at their own pace not everybody is really able to learn healthy boundaries at nine years old i'm just saying like people don't even know how to freaking do boundaries at 50 35 sometimes so how we are able to be better than what we are learning in our youth is really just how we're able to utilize the tools around us how we are able to pretty much come across a lot like come up come across and break out a lot of those trauma traumatic events that happen the trauma that is written on our soul that is just on our mind the entire time that we are going to do everything that we really can to not experience that trauma we're going to make sure that we can wash it out we're going to make sure that we can fix it we're going to make sure that we can get out of it somehow somehow some way shape or form and we're going to make sure that we can at least utilize the good parts that we were learned learned 
learned learning the the things that we did learn when we were younger to make sure that we can still advance with the teenager years with the adult years like the good things like we're going to still keep everything that is good for us around us but it doesn't always mean that it's still good for us but if we're still knowing that it is a healthy way to go about things if we know that it's something that it has not really strayed you wrong i don't really think that it's really something to get rid of but hey it like i said it depends on what people really go through through their, through their youth you know and some people experience some traumatic shit in their younger years and just think like of how much that it really affects you over the course of time if you are really having a toxic family that doesn't support you if you have grown into anything that was abusive or you were in an abusive relationship you know like that does affect you that does get you in that specific type of thinking to where you're only going to be in that way of thinking for so long until something breaks you out of it, until something snaps, so to speak, like in your brain that you just know that that is not the way that you really want to go about these things anymore. Or pretty much just changing you. And change is a big thing that I'm super supportive on. You know, a, p a person who wants to change to be better, I don't really think it's something that you really have to call them out just because that they are doing it in a different way than some people are doing it. You know, people change so much. People are able to change as much as they want to, but it really just depends on how much they are actually willing to put in the work, put willing to put in the effort, willing to put in and actually look back at the things that really were toxic that they that the individual was doing, that I was doing, that you could have been doing. You know, looking back at those things and realizing like, hey, I can change that right now. There is really nothing stopping me of being able to be a different person except acceptance and accepting the things that did happen, accepting the ways that you were and just know that you want to be better. That's why change is something that is different for every single person because every single person wants to change something, be it either good or bad, be it either something that is completely necessary for you to change or something that's not even necessary to change at all. But that also depends on how we are going about when it comes to other people too. Other people want us to change. Other th like things that we see that we want to strive for, we're probably going to change some way, shape, or form just to make sure that we can get to that point, that we can get it, that we can have it. So like, and that's the thing that really sucks too is that we always think that we need to change for things. We always need to think that to get a person to like you or get to get a person to really just like connect with you that we need to change for them, that we need to change to just interact with them at all when we don't really need to be doing that at all. But if it comes to the point to where you know you need to change your communication habits, that you need to change of how you're coming across people, that you need to change your thinking and thought patterns, that those are something that are definitely necessary. It is completely okay to me anyway. It doesn't matter if other people don't think that it's okay. I think that it's completely okay if you actually want to do it just to make sure that you can be better for other people too and not just you. But you also need to make sure that if you are changing, you need to do it for you. You need to make sure that you know that you feel it on the deep side, like this is a problem, I need to fix it. And this, or this is something that I definitely need to improve on. This is something that I definitely need to excel, uh, excel in. That, that's just as much, shows just as much about how you wanna be different compared to other people, how they wanna be different. You know, and for how we lounge about, how we relax, how we absorb and just want to make sure that we're not actually doing anything also varies from person to person too. Some people are completely okay with just being able to sit on the couch. Me, I am not. Sometimes I am just ready to go after two hours of watching something and I'm like, all right, let's do something else. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Or, you know, sometimes I am able to sit through three movies and just feel like nothing really happened. Nothing was really wrong, but I don't really think that's something that I want to go through. So I don't really do that. I try to make sure I can stay busy as much as I can. Me relaxing is not me relaxing. That's not relaxing to me. Like to bring myself relax relaxation, it means that I got stuff done. I means that I was on track. I got a lot of stuff off my plate. You know, like that is relaxing to me to know that I don't really have a lot to do. Like that is what kind of calms me to the point to where I can just chill out if I want to play a game for a little while I can or you know, if I want to like do something music wise, if I want to do something video wise, if I want to do something that shows and gives out a lot more like when it comes to passions and stuff like that. And so going back to how I was talking about when we come to how we communicate with each other is that communication styles vary from person to person too. And it doesn't really also help that we have so much different languages, that we have so many different lingual ways to go about things that, you know, we don't even talk how we should have been talking. We don't even talk anymore like how people were talking in 50 years ago, how people were even talking 100 years ago. We definitely know that we are not talking the same as people were talking 300 years ago plus. You know, like our communication style has changed so much. And I feel individually that is kind of what makes it really hard to be able to talk to people sometimes. Maybe in a sense. I don't really know where I'm going to go with this yet, but we'll figure it out. But 
how much vocal activity that one person might have might be different compared to the other person. Some people believe that if you talk a shit ton that you are not a person to be trustworthy with, that you're just going to go spout everything and anything to another person that shouldn't even be knowing your business, which might be true. I can't admit that you know people who do have that tendency of just being able to tell anybody everything and anything without really consideration for how some people feel about those things, you know, some people don't really think about that, but I don't really think that's really a bad thing to have to stop yourself from talking just because that people say you talk too much. Sometimes I feel like you talk too little. <laughs> and that's how I, I feel anyway, you know, like I don't really think I've, anybody's ever really told me that I talk too much or that I speak too much, but you know, just because that of my way of looking at it that some people might really think that I'm that I'm just spouting off my ass, which I mean sometimes I am, but I at least have enough of the acceptance to be able to tell you that I do instead of just being like, nah, I don't do that. What are you talking about? You know, but the communication style for how we are able to communicate with human beings differs. How we are able to actually comfort somebody when they are feeling down and make sure that we can communicate with them in a really healthily way or somebody is, a, like we are having a heated discussion with somebody that we're not just getting heated just to start pointing fingers of the, you, you should be accountable for this when most of the time we just need to be accountable for what we're doing. The accountability for how we talk is something that a lot of people I feel need to take into consideration for themselves because some people are completely okay with just being able to spout mouth-breathing bullshit, which, I mean, it's not like it's not always called for, you know? Like, there is so much understanding that I really have as a person that I can understand why people why people do do that to some people, but hurt people hurt people, you know? So that's why I'm not really too supportive about being able just to talk shit, you know? Like, if you want to talk shit, you can talk shit, but there's a point where you're kind of stepping over the boundary a little bit of just being an ass. <laughs> Thinking that you need to get up and that you know everybody and everything about what that one person goes through. No, you don't. Like, you just experience what you experience. You know, and the vocal projection about how we are able to voice our own opinion differs from person to person too. You know, some people are really quiet. Some people don't really want to voice their opinion. Me, I do like to voice my opinion, but I know when I should be voicing it and when I should not be voicing it. Not everybody really knows how to do that, and I can't say that I'm completely 100% I know how to do it, like every conversation that I have. You know, like there is the way that we do need to be able to take consideration of just listening sometimes. Sometimes we don't really need to actually talk. Sometimes we really just do need to listen. And that's why I'm completely okay with being able to tell people like, hey, if you need to vent, go ahead and vent. I'm going to do my best to try to not have to feel like I need to put myself in your shoes when you can just tell me what's going on in your own shoes, you know, but experiencing for what other people experience of like putting yourself into their own shoes is definitely a really good experience of being able to talk to somebody. If you just listen, just listen to actually what they're actually telling you that it's something really beautiful, I think, to be honest, you know, and that just kind of really goes along with the whole point of, you know, what we learn, of what we absorb, because we absorb and learn so much shit. Sometimes a lot of it is really pointless. Some of this information that some people are really just talking about are really aren't necessary, but I mean, shit, even the info that I could be speaking right now doesn't really need to be necessary, but that's just because that we absorb and we learn differently. You know, like, from what I watch, from what I listen to, from what I read, is probably going to be different than somebody who is watching something that is just just to scroll, right, or just to watch, just to pass time. Most of the time, usually the things that I'm trying to absorb are things that I'm trying to utilize at my advantage at all times, be it either if it's something that I can learn for communication, be it either something that I can learn to apply to relationships, be it either something that I can apply to finances, be it either something that I can apply to creativity. You know, that there's always just something that I'm trying to learn at all times. And it could be stressful for me, anyway to have to think that I need to constantly learn about things all the time but I love learning you know that is kind of the one reason why I did want to go back to school is because there's a lot of different stuff and just besides what the curriculum is teaching me then when it comes to the life lessons that we learn too you know the what we learn is also part of the, the life lessons that we are learning along our along our own path about what we are experiencing is definitely going to be for what is utilized for our best interests and not other people's best interests and so we always have to take that into consideration but 
what other people are worrying about is also something different than what I'm going to be worrying about because we all worry about the same things, which is usually finances, relationships, jobs, when it comes to what we want to do for ourselves or how we want to be able to project ourselves to others. Like we are constantly worrying about these things all the time. We are constantly worrying about what other people are going to say about what we are saying about if they're going to just give us backlash, if they're actually going to agree with us, if they're actually just going to be to the point to where they're not even supportive at all. You know, like I'm worried about that sometimes where I don't really get the support that I really want. But at the same time, it's like if I know that I can support myself, then I'm going to do my best to be able to be there for myself and tell myself like, hey, we can still do this. We can still keep going. We can still push out the worries and just try to get on track, you know, and having to worry about every little thing is so stressful for me. You know, having to worry about how other people are really thinking about me, how I want to make sure that I can be there for other people, you know, worrying about what's going to happen, like what's going to be my next step, what's going to be coming around the corner if I do this or wondering if the decision I made was right. You know, like I do have that tendency of being an overthinker, but I think in a specific way that it definitely helps me out to be able to kind of see all my different options instead of always just having to think that the one option I picked was definitely the best one, which it could have been compared to have to think that if I did it wrong, that why do I need to question it? Because sometimes we don't really need to question why we did specific things. We don't need to question why we're worrying about specific things. There is a reason why we probably are in the first place, but we will go through it as much as we can. We will try to get over those worries and try to fix them as best as we can so that we don't have to worry about them so that they're not something that's consistently lingering in our brain all the time. You know, and the morals that we have for ourselves definitely do impact the worries. They definitely do impact, you know, what we learn, the, the uh, thoughts and thinking patterns, the way that we communicate is that the morals of the self are definitely what really gives us structure for our own individuality. And the morals about what we think is right and what we think is wrong is going to differ from person to person. Not everybody is going to think that what my morals are are going to be exactly for what they feel because a lot of people feel different things and especially when it comes to the point where people are are okay with being able to voice their opinion that really kind of interferes a lot with a lot of people's self morals and their beliefs you know that is the big thing too when it comes to how our world is structured is that we are just so prone of being able just to be like this is what i believe if you don't believe in it then you better get the fuck out you know, nobody really kind of gives it that supportive structure to kind of be like, hey, I'm invested into this. This is how something that has been in my life for this amount of time, you know, that why not give it to some, why not try to tell somebody in a learning, to give it to them in a learning experience to kind of be like, hey, I can teach you some things if you want and you can just take it however you really want to, you know, like that goes back to the how we learn to absorb things that if we believe in something, if we believe in something specific that we should be able to tell people in a very constructive way instead of having to be like, you need to believe this. If you don't, you're not right. You know, who the heck? Like, like, I don't really see the point of doing that. I don't really see the point of having to think that we just need to just do that, right? Like, if you actually want to show people what you are seeing, then you need to be able to tell them and show them in a graceful way, in a very convicted way of being able to preach to people about how you think about things. And conviction has definitely been one thing that has been on my mind at least the past couple of days is being able to speak with conviction, being able to speak with truth. It's hard to do that sometimes because we are worried about what other people are going to uh, tell us about our beliefs, about how we are thinking about things, if we are thinking differently, if we're thinking on the same page. You know, like just being able to speak your own truth is the biggest thing that can really show you how to be an individual compared to other people. To be able to actually be your own person, be like, this is what I believe in, and it's, I'm okay with doing that, but I'm not gonna harp on you, I'm not gonna get on your ass if you don't believe in the same thing as I do. Just being able to have that conviction wherever you go is something that I feel is very strong. You know, and there's no such thing as normal. There is no fine definition of what normal is. I don't really need to even go heavily into this, honestly. Just because if there is no right way, there is no wrong way. You only learn what is right and wrong for you. You only learn what is right and wrong for that moment, for that experience, for whatever you are trying to strive for. Like having to think that there is a way that you need to be able to support your spouse or just be in a relationship. You know how many different options there are, like of how many different options, how many different beliefs, how many different ways that people think about things about how a relationship should be run is crazy. 
there is no right or wrong way. You just got to make sure that you can learn with it and make sure that you can build with it. You got to make sure that you can at least still be there for your partner. You got to make sure that you can support them 100% and you like them. You like 100% they're good and they're bad. You know, there's a lot that goes along with relationships and that's what makes it that there is no normal way of being able to do it except just make sure that you both are on the same page, that you are both able to have respect for each other and still be your own individuals and still be able to be one as a couple, you know? Like, there is no right or wrong way to be able to how you do that. There is no right or wrong way of how you need to be able to raise your children. I mean, that is open for discussion, okay? Like, you can situate that out. I'm not really gonna step foot in that because I did, I, oh. I just felt like if I just dipped my toe in that for a second, that would have been good. So no, I'm not doing. I'm not dealing with that. But no, there is no right or wrong way. You can do it exactly how you want to, as long as you are not being a fucking prick. As long as you're not being a fucking asshole. As long as you're not actually being a terrible human being. That there is no right or wrong way. You know, you are will learn your consequences when that consequence comes up. You will learn of why you should should have done it that way or shouldn't have done it that way. And when that time comes, you know. Because you live life your way, not other people's way, not other distinctions about how, how other people should live life or how they should be able to get all this accomplished done at this age, at this time, you know, you can do it however you want to do it. There is nothing that is stopping you from thinking that you can't have a family at 35 or 40 just because you wanted to wait that long. It is your way, not anybody else's way, you know, and... That kind of pretty much goes along with this next part is the system of the mind. You know, the system that is in place, the system that is constantly around us at all times, right? Like, it's not really this whole matrix con concept. I mean, it is, but it isn't. But the system that we have in our brain is different from how other people's brains work, right? Some people are, are going to only go by what they are taught for how they are able to absorb. So we're only going to learn off of this system that we have right here connected to our body. You know, the reality of our, our reality is completely different than what other people are experiencing in their reality. Everybody is already in their own little bubble. So if there's two people in their own little bubbles, right, how are they able to ever really able to st say that there isn't anything different about them when they are when this guy is probably experiencing something completely different than this other guy is even if it's for the same thing you know we are all in our own little reality bubble we are all in our own little world we are all trying to build our own world for how we see it how we think it that there is nothing that really correlates over about somebody else's system compared to my system compared to your system there is nothing that really has to be able to think that there isn't anything different about that because that is what makes us an ind our own individual person is what we are thinking, speaking, and hearing. What we are absorbing, what we are putting out. Our own little world. You know, and the issues of what haven't you done, what needs to be, what is your, what's in your way, why not start it, why not end it. You know, like the issues about what we feel how we have gone about things or how we have experienced these things like ah i should have just done this you know like oh why didn't i do it that way or you know what if i i should have just started back then you know but it doesn't mean that you still can't start now like if, if you're really understanding about where i'm really trying to get at, i kind of definitely started that off in a very odd way you know but you know, people experience this throughout their life multiple, multiple times. Like, like you know, midlife crises, you know, just so certain psychotic breaks, even just mental stress that people are going to go through this in some way, shape or form of like, you know, I didn't I didn't get to do that. So now I feel like my life is wasted away or I didn't do it this way. And it probably would have came out a lot better if I would have done it this way instead of that way. Or just having to think that, oh, I I wanted to start this so long ago, but I just haven't, you know. But why can't you? Why can't you? You know, like what is really stopping you from still being able to do that now? You're going to have to go through that on your own way. You're going to have to figure it out what is really stopping you, be it, be it either a physical block, a mental block, an emotional block. You know, there's a lot of different things that could be correlating around that. So you really have to figure that out on your own pace. But this always comes to the point of what I always try to say is that there is no right or wrong way. There is no no such thing is like just because that you didn't do it then doesn't mean you can't do it now just because that you wanted to start that five years ago doesn't mean you still can't start now 
you know, the individuality about how we are able to go about these things that if you still want to do it, then that's completely fine. There is really nothing else that really has to stop you as long as you just do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't want have to do it. It doesn't mean that you have to all of a sudden just like drop, change your entire life plan and just think that it's all out the door. Like, no, you can still do it how you want to do it. But just don't think that you really need to stop yourself just because that it wasn't the time it wasn't the right way to do it or just thinking about how you should have done things when you can still do it and change those things now you can still put in the work put in the effort and you will get to exactly what you want to go for you know and that pretty much just ends it to the point of like say what you mean and mean what you say if you are serious about what you are saying then mean it if you are serious about how you are trying to go about things or you are serious about dedicating yourself to something that you are serious about putting in all of your life work to be able to do it, then mean it. That's the thing that really shows us, uh, us, me, you, other people around you of your own dedication for how you want to get things done, for how you want to advance your life, for how you want to keep going about specific things because not everybody needs to go about it the same way. Just because other people do it, and it happens to them in this way, some way, shape, or form doesn't mean it's going to happen to you like that. But if you still know that you want it, regardless, that you mean it and you go get that shit and you don't look fucking back. It's all I got to tell you right now that there is not a goddamn thing in this world except you that is going to stop you from doing anything. Like people are going to talk shit. People are going to get you off your path. People are going to try to do your best, their best for you to not get to where you want to go. And... That's why you just got to push, push past that shit. Don't become part of the group. Become the individual. You are an individual. You are what you think about. You're not, a, you're not in group thinking. If you're constantly in group thinking all the time, you might be like me a little bit to where it's like you're just getting all this random information and you're trying to figure out which one makes sense to you. You know, like I've had to really, really find that difference for myself about if I'm actually making this personal decision for myself or if somebody is making that decision for me, you know, and I mean, I've really had to correlate that with some serious things that have happened in my life. If I actually knew that regardless at the end of the day, you are the one deciding to do it. You're the one that is deciding that you wanted to do this. It's not about the group thinking or the individual thinking. Like, and this kind of goes back to that first part in the beginning is that, just because that you have worked on something with another individual, with the group, does not mean that at the end of the day that they are making that decision for you because you still have to make the decision if you want to do it. Flat out. Flat out. You know, mic drop. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, tell me what you think about this. Like, I didn't really expect this to be 32 minutes, not going to lie. But I think that this is actually something that is interesting to think about about how an individual goes about other things compared to other individuals because we are all different don't think that you're not special you are very special you will have every reason to think that you are special because you are graced to be able to be on this planet compared to other people that there there was a statistic that i'd seen that neil degrassi tyson put out on some interview and i thought it was the most insane thing ever is that it's like the chances of you being born are like so crazy compared to actually the amount of people that have actually lived on this earth so that you being here right now you are special you do matter okay okay so hope you guys enjoyed that please tell me your thoughts please tell me anything that you guys want to talk about because hey i'm open to suggestions i'm open to anything so like comment subscribe and share and i'll be see you guys soon